What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Invest 96L over here decaying as time continues to go on. We have some tropical in- stuff going on across much of the Atlantic. We have some storms going on in, in the Caribbean Sea. We're seeing, as we continue to go on, we're seeing better and better conditions for tropical development, and that's kind of what I want to go ahead and talk to you guys about today. Before we do, I wanted to go ahead and raise attention to this tweet right here. We have a a tropical wave train over all of Africa right here. We have this tropical wave right here. We have this one over Mali, this one near Niger, this one over Chad, and a couple over Sudan right here, which... The reason I'm showing you this because all of those are going to end up going to, through the Atlantic Ocean right there. They're going to cross the Sahel and go into the Atlantic Ocean. And a couple of them may potentially have a chance to develop be- uh, because some of the conditions I've been noticing across much of the Atlantic right here. So that's what we have going on right here. We have these waves that are currently in the main development region right now. We're going to go ahead and pull- go back to the infrared to show you. This tropical wave right here is show is not really that organized right there. I'm not too worried about it considering the conditions it's in right now aren't that great. There is some moist air, but there is still a little bit of shear for that. And in long term, I don't see this one developing. This one, though, has piqued my interest a little bit. It is starting to show some deep conv- uh, convection, which is somewhat typical with these tropical waves. It's so- nothing to, uh, to of note, but it does look somewhat compact, somewhat or- organized right there. And I want to go ahead and kind of play devil's advocate in a little bit and show you guys like what's working for and what's working against this thing. We're going to go ahead and start with the global sea temperatures we have right here. And to start, we're going to go ahead and show you the main development region with what we have. We're looking at areas of 28 plus degrees Celsius across the MDR in early August, which is something you absolutely do not want to see. Typically, the water is around 26, 27 not 28, 29 degrees Celsius, or about 82 to 84 degrees in the if you live in the United States. And we also also are seeing a much larger area of 30 plus degrees Celsius waters in parts of the main development region right here, which is what we absolutely do not need to see right there. That's 86 degree Fahrenheit water. That is fuel for tropical development by itself right there. And if we go ahead and go a little bit further to the west, parts of the Caribbean, parts of the Atlantic right here, well, all I can say is the Gulf is starting to re- uh, rewarm up or starting to get a good 31 plus degree Celsius ring starting to develop, redevelop once again. We had that a couple of weeks ago, then the temperatures went down just a little bit. And across Cuba, we're seeing 31 plus across the Bahamas in a massive area of 29 plus degree Celsius or 84 plus degree Fahrenheit from the Gulf of Mexico, pretty much through the main development region. So that's why I'm so worried about this because at this point, it's early August and at least global sea temperature wise, it's not really like ahead of schedule anymore, if you know what I mean. It's this pretty much house money. And the big question is how high can this go? So that's the thing I wanted to go ahead and kind of share with you guys real quickly. We're going to go ahead and next show you the OHC. And we've been seeing a lot of values that have been outright alarming to me. First of all, we're looking at an area of 125 OHC plus from basically at this point now invading the main development region all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. And that in itself is already pretty alarming right there. And we're seeing a lot of areas over 150 OHC across parts of the Western Caribbean, parts of the Gulf, even a spot here in the in the loop current right there. There's a bit of a warm eddy right there that's starting to develop. So that's already pretty alarming right there. And if we compare that back to 2020, we weren't nearly as big. We weren't nearly as, as expansive, especially out here in the Atlantic. We weren't nearly as large in value. So that's the situation we're in right now compared to that to 2023. So those two factors by themselves are already pretty alarming. But we also have to pull in a couple of other factors, such as wind shear. This is the wind shear Right here, here's the latest as of 10 o'clock this morning, 11 o'clock Eastern. Right here, the wind shear across much of the Atlantic and the Western Main Development Region has decreased considerably. So that already is pre- uh, pretty concerning, but there is going to be fluctuations in shear over the next couple of weeks. And if we go ahead and go to the East Atlantic, we can exacerbate that. Even more, we're seeing a couple of pockets of wind shear around the MDR, so definitely something to monitor right there. But still, a downward trend of shear, of shear that is going to continue as we continue to go, uh, go on. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the European model for 
what the shear forecast is going to be like, and then we'll go ahead and talk moisture because that's the that's moisture is the key right there because with all the dry air that's currently in the Atlantic, it's basically our last line of defense. And then once that uh, falls apart, it's open season. So we'll go ahead and first talk about the shear forecast, and we'll show you the shear is still going on a downward trend, especially like starting in a few days or so, August 4th, basically from the main development region all the way to the Gulf of Mexico, we have a huge decrease in wind shear. And I want to go ahead and cross-check this with the moisture. And for now, this is what's holding it. We have the dry air right here, the dry air across the Caribbean, across the Gulf. We still have some, some moist air in the main development region over here, but overall it's not that expansive right there but th by the time we get to august 6th it kind of holds around there it kind of stays where it is right now although there is a bit of a resurgence of shear in the caribbean across the subtropical atlantic shear is going to continue fluctuating by august 7th we start to see a resurgence of shear in the, in the caribbean a resurgence of shear in the main development region if we go ahead and show you the dew, uh, the dew points however the moisture the main development region, you, as you can see, gets a lot more moist. However, we are starting to see some more Sahara dust coming off of the Atlantic. It's still on a downward trend, and I'll go ahead and show you that real quickly. Here's what we have going on. Here's the Sahara dust. We have more coming off. It's not, this is right here, this burst right here is not nearly as much as it was 72 hours ago. As you can see, we had a huge area of dry air. And now if we go back 108 hours out, it's concentrated but it's not as it's not as bad and we're looking at this right here and the it's absolutely a lot less dry there so we continue to move through right here and we do have a bit of sahara dust moving through the atlantic ocean right there but compared to what i've seen with a lot with other bursts it's not as much so definitely something to pay attention to i'll say the time we start seeing activity i'd say the second week of august is when we should start paying very close attention and then the third week of august is going to see be when we start seeing some more developments we're going to go ahead and next show you some ensemble runs to kind of show you uh, show you the case i'm working with for about the first five days we're not going to see that much development however after that we start seeing a potential tropical wave moving off the coast of Africa that is showing signs of potential development. And we have several European ensemble runs that potentially have this strengthening up into a hurricane right here through the Bahamas, moving north of the Antilles right here, but potentially impacting the United States in some way right here. Now, keep in mind, this is about this is more than nine days out, so we're not 100% sure what's going to happen, but it's still something to continue monitoring at the very least. We'll go ahead and cross-check that with the GFS ensembles because that's just one ensemble, Patrick. What are you talking about? Well, if we go ahead and show you the GFS ensembles, we continue to show, it shows a similar situation to that at the European. It shows potential tropical development from that same tropical wave and another tropical wave to the to basically in front of it. And it continues to organize, develop. We start seeing some more ensemble runs of potentially hurricane scenarios right there that could have an impact on the Bahamas, the United States, especially Florida, North Carolina. But that's, again, more than 10 days out. But it is showing similar stuff to what the European is doing. Now I'll show you the GPS ensemble to kind of crown this all out. And the GPS ensemble, last time I checked, and here it is right here, similar to the European, it starts showing a lot of tropical development right here. And it shows some more concentrated scenarios than both the European and GFS. Although by the time it does approach land in the United States, it's like 12 days out. So definitely we need to take that with a massive grain of salt, at least for the time being, until we start seeing more and more scenarios, until we start seeing official forecasts on the official European of potential tropical development. We're going to go ahead and close the video for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.